Cool, perfect. So yeah, I guess um, opening up with news and how developments are going on our side. So the new contract is under development at the moment. I know in our white paper, we spoke about how we'll be basing some of the functionality in it off Compound. Now, the functionality that we are actually taking from that is actually forked from Compound. It was on, I believe, Yam Finance brought it in. It's basically a small improvements to the governance system that was on the Yam Finance. And we're taking their governance systems that they have on their own governance token. So this will basically mean that everybody in here, we're not going to say is it's going to be at a DAO level of control, but we will be able to poll the community now reliably whenever we do want to say make any decisions which may impact the future of the token, which, like I said, it's a very large community that I have at the moment. And that means that when these decisions come up, it can often be better to get a more wider reach across the group and see what everybody will be interested in, particularly when we're looking towards things like staking farms and how things may be invested through that staking pool if we're looking for dividends or when it comes to, say, particular partners or even smaller things like what kind of gaming competitions will we run. So we will have that set up and running. Um, at Well, it'll be in the contract at launch, but we will hope to have... Um, we hope to have the actual snapshot and voting system up pretty shortly after that one. Outside of that, uh, Skylar, do we have any other general news to put in outside of the development on the actual token contract itself? And of course, we have begun the design and development stages on the staking pool uh, lottery system as well. Uh, not not too much. Um, we do have uh, some pretty in my opinion, some pretty A1 uh, Ask Me Anything's coming up, not just, you know, community level where you guys join in, but it's within uh, other communities. Um, I can't be too direct on it, so but, uh, but uh, we'll be vague. There are very, in my opinion, I've looked through their chat, I've talked to them, and they seem like they're, they're people that have experience in cryptocurrencies in general, and they're not just, you know, the run-of-the-mill a hundred time moonshot people they they actually have legitimate discussions about um the, the the tech that's surrounding cryptocurrency and they're actually involved so got some of that stuff and then uh i mean other than that yeah that's uh that's about it just working on that v2 contract that's going to be coming up shortly and the csgo competition which i hope all of you guys are practicing for if you have not found a team please go to the dojira gaming section and try to look for one but there's going to be a $2,000 prize that is going to be in USDC, which is basically USDT Tether. So it's a stable coin. Um, so invite people. If you know them, if you know they're good, invite them to the community, get training with them. And uh, yeah, we'll just go from there. We're going to go a little bit more. We're public with it right now, but we're going to get uh, a little bit more attention with that here shortly. So we get more eyes on and everything. But uh yeah, other than that, uh, nothing else. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, I forgot to mention on that one. I know that we had requests coming in beforehand asking if we'll be continuing on doing new AMAs in the future and external AMAs. And yes, we have been working with that. We've just been extremely deliberate in who we're choosing to do these AMAs with. I think everybody can remember the original AMAs we did where, you know, it had to be done. You'll take kind of anywhere you can go to speak about the token and what we have planned. We took it, we jumped in. But we found that it just wasn't a fantastic use of time in that a lot of them didn't result in much attention actually coming on the token itself. A lot of them were kind of populated with airdrop groups that were just looking to try and win those, you know, the small USDC and Dojira tokens that are given out as part of the as part of the incentive for asking questions, etc. So we've been a lot more deliberate in eyeing up, I suppose, more active groups that would have an interest in the technology and for more kind of, I suppose, long term holders would be the way I'd put it in getting them on board and speak to them about our token, what we're developing on it and the full ecosystem that we're building. So yeah, we're really looking forward to doing those. And those, I believe, Scarlett, you may correct me if I'm wrong, we are looking at all of those being audio based. Am I correct? You are correct. Yeah, that was um, so much better when it's voice based. We can actually have a bit of dialogue going back and forth. And you won't have to wait four or five minutes for me to type out a massive, comprehensive answer to a short question or anything like that. Especially when I believe the biggest problem that we had in a lot of the AMAs that we uh, ran over text 
I actually noticed that the same names were popping up in several of them and they were just airdrop bots, stuff like that, which are pre-programmed with the same generic questions. And it can be pretty difficult to tell which ones they are until you've seen them a couple of times. So you sit there and try to open dialogue and discuss over this point and et cetera, et cetera. It's just, um, yeah, not much use. I think that it's a problem we're seeing in a very crowded crypto scene at the moment. A lot of tokens do giveaways and the the most financially effective thing that you could do is try to win all those giveaways without actually need to be present for the giveaways and without having to actually learn anything about the token itself so it's a little bit too incentivized on that side but given a good voice chat just beats a text chat every single day of the week in my opinion Uh, let's kick on then scholar you can uh, fire the opening question at me Land sales have been primary revenue sources for major players like the Central Land Sandbox and Axie. Is world creation and land sell part of the Dozier of ver- uh, vision for establishing revenue, or are you more focused on exploring alternative revenue streams that are less established? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. So I'm, again, deliberately being a bit guarded on the details of some of the larger developments that we have lined up for the future. But it is certainly something that we are looking at. I mean, I think it's been proven that that is a model which works for a lot of development houses. And it's also worked fantastically for the actual community themselves, that people are able to jump in, pick up prime real estate. And there's a lot of things that can be done with it then, depending on the actual game. A lot of it is reminding me of, and I hate saying this, but some people might be too young to actually remember it. It's uh, Star Wars Galaxies, the old Star Wars MMO, and that was one of the first games that really did stuff like that where you could purchase a plot of land build a house on it and set up a store inside of it you can get it stocked you can build items or craft things actually sell out of it through basically a vending machine stuff like that it was really ahead of its time back when it came out and now we're starting to kind of see that again and i think a lot of stuff like that has a massive place when it comes into actual play to earn games as a lot of people i think well, really, everybody that gets into crypto, they're looking for that bit of passive income when it comes down to it. And when you can have games that are genuinely fun, but can allow for just passively earning tokens and stuff like that, like I think that's a brilliant mix. And land ownership within virtual worlds and games, that's, um, yeah, that, that's always a brilliant way to look at that. So hopefully we'll be able to elaborate on it a little bit more deeply in the future. But right now, the the titles that we're developing do not have land ownership specifically in mind no is the roadmap timeline with blockchain game nft mining pool slash staking v2 and launchpad still accurate with all coming out in the next six weeks yeah so i think we do need to take a look at that because we did change around what we were doing a, a lot so if you were to look at the actual roadmap on the website, I think we yeah we, we would still have the actual the SDK development being a primary focus in that. And I believe the tier one CEX is also in there as a primary focus. And we've spoken about that now a couple of times, inclusive in the white paper. So everything on there will we will need to be taking a look at it. But there are like there are developments ongoing at the moment with the blockchain game itself. I wouldn't commit to a direct time frame on that one. We are working very hard on it, but we don't want to start giving very specific time frames, which may eventually get away from us while we're still pretty much spreading the resources out as we have them. And we're doing a lot right now with getting our new token, uh, our new token up and running both on Ethereum and on Polygon, getting the bridge up with that one, getting the actual full staking farm. So not just them, um, you know, an NFT mining pool, and um, we're getting a lot more than that going in there. Uh, V2 is of high priority for us. I can guarantee that. But um, everything else, we would need to start taking a look back on and see what way we're going to update that roadmap. So we'll try and get some better information on that for you in the relative near future. But uh, yeah, the team needs to kind of sit down and hash out. I suppose we have our own internal timelines on it, but we have not communicated them yet. We need to make sure that we get them buckled down as we don't want to, you know, if we start giving announcements or announcements of announcements or anything like that, it's just kind of chasing our tail at the end of the day. And as we've seen before, you get people that do want to, you know, buy up news and sell off or buy up rumors and sell off news. And again, on my side, I'm more focused on the actual development end of it. But I can understand people do get frustrated when they see news suddenly come out. They're not at their, you know, PC or their desktop or 
uh, their phone or anything at the time. They miss out. People start buying up. By the time they get back, they're getting sold on top of stuff like that. So I do understand the frustration in it. And that's why we tried to keep those things a little bit closer to the chest. But I do understand the need to get out a little bit more information to you all as well. So yeah, the team will circle around on that one and we'll see what we can do for you. Can we look forward to in terms of community growth? Well, of course, we have those AMAs that I just mentioned that are going to be within different communities, not necessarily uh, partnered communities, which, of course, once we get partners, you know, I'm kind of, you know, pushing the idea slowly towards them to have a an AMA in their channel, AMA in ours, because those always worked out to uh, prior partnerships. But again, those AMAs that I'm talking about are with communities that are focused on like what's happening with with blockchain tech in general what's happening with cryptocurrencies not just a specific token um and they are on telegram they are on discord and it's going to be primarily voice so that way it's again like not botted at all um we also of course have this csgo competition that should bring in some more people from the community because obviously we're saying hey you know you guys could win money just by playing a game for like an hour or two which two thousand dollars split between five people that's 400 bucks for playing for like an hour and you're playing a game right we do want to advertise outside of the dojir community to bring people inside um top of that uh i'm also uh like i i have been today i'm making connections through an app called clubhouse it's primarily like a voice chat uh, app and a lot of people talk about cryptocurrencies on that tokens tech etc and so i'm you know building my own connections and trying to get myself out there to bring people into the dojira community and uh, on top of that uh yeah just every day we're doing something different uh or five days out of the week we have specific things like on um tuesday we're going on tiktok we're grabbing uh different videos commenting on them wednesday we have youtube we're doing the same thing trying to make it look a little bit less promoted than all the other tokens out there where it's just like you know x something something doge elon to the moon it's, it's actually you know like hey have you guys heard about this it's about blockchain gaming or you know tying it in with whatever videos uh you, we got twitter thursdays and then reddit fridays and then uh saturdays mainly like game night and stuff and so it, it's also you know on like we want to utilize you guys as well because word of mouth is one of the fastest and in my opinion the most important ways for a community to grow uh owen would you like to add anything yeah certainly so yeah i'm absolutely loving the stuff that we're doing right now just with outreach in gaming competitions because the reality is i mean we have those era that we wanted to it's basically there to start spreading out into the community and a great way of doing that is bringing in new members to the community as well so when we can see that we have old members of the community basically the old guard playing with you know brand new people finding those for the first time and they're having a laugh they're getting on stream and people are getting competitive for prizes stuff like that i mean that's a fantastic way to introduce new people to the community and the prizes are, I mean, I think everybody will agree as far as, you know, small streamed competitions go are really good. Like, um, I was a little bit blown away. I, I didn't know what the prize was for the Rocket League game that we played last week. I might have put more effort into winning the last round of it if I had known it was 5,000. But um, stuff like that is really good to uh, kind of get your name You're not out. getting that Dojira, Owen. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you get that? <laughs> because I, I might win, Scholar. If I no. win, then I get the I get the Dojira. No. no, we're supposed to be as like the final boss is like a like a joke in a way. <laughs> yeah, and, and the final boss can beat you, man. <laughs> okay. But um, yeah, absolutely love all of that stuff. Uh, similarly, as well as I, you know, we both just spoke about prior the fact that we're moving towards these communities which are focused on actual you know voice conversations and stuff like that i mean i don't know if any of you have been in a lot of the telegram crypto channels that used to be pretty conversation based and now it's a graveyard of bots just spamming each other there's no conversation and the only time that you do see a forced conversation is when four or five people jump in from a newly launched token on you know the binance smart chain and they're all telling each other about how much you know money they've made in the hopes that somebody else will jump in and start buying up the bags so i think that actual community is a focus on different forms of communication that can't quite be as easily gamed and i mean voice communication is just a one for that in my opinion 
and it allows for actual dialogue. I mean, if you look at any of the channels that do that stuff, where you see people pretending that, you know, they've made a fortune off this token with a market cap of $8, like, I don't think that would come across quite as convincingly if you could imagine me and Skylar doing that on the voice chat on here. Well, may, I don't know, maybe we're very good actors. Maybe $8 is a lot. But um, yeah, I love the outreach to all of these different types of communities. And of course, partners, as Skylar said, like we've had, um, I, I think we've had some kind of rocky partnerships in the past. And I think most people will kind of agree with me on that one. And now we're looking towards kind of building up more long term, sustainable ones with tokens that, you know, there's basically a mutual benefit for both tokens and the communities can intermingle as well. And I think that's one of the most important things for me right now is just finding like minded communities that have, you know, good community leaders in it. They're well driven. They have their own targets. And I think that, again, that the bear season we just kind of got through with the little mini bear was really good in showing us what tokens actually have a team that are willing to stick around and work when things are difficult. And it's really shone a light on a lot of tokens that were out there, which, you know, they dropped dead during the kind of market cool off. And they're nowhere to be seen now that the market is heating back up again because they were abandoned both by, you know, their leaders, developers and their community. So I think that's really putting us on in a brilliant position to kind of find more like minded communities that we can work alongside and ones that we get, you know, a good mutual benefit from a two way relationship. So, yeah, I think that really we're doing a lot in that area. And of course, there is the marketing side of things, which Scholar is working on as well. And I think we'll have more information on that over the next week or two, won't we? That is correct. I just want to, cool. you know, confer with you guys, make sure, again, everything is locked down so it's not like oh yeah this is going to go live and then it doesn't yep absolutely so yeah that's um those are my thoughts on it anyway so yeah i'm really excited to see how the next couple of weeks play out oh and of course uh, the fact we're moving over to polygon a lot of people have kind of come to me at this concern that you know people don't know what polygon is everybody knows was it what ethereum is and polygon is extremely popular i mean the market cap right now uh, i think it's just outside of the top 10 on the tokens i'll do a quick check on coin market cap but um polygon is extremely popular and it's popular for all the right reasons that there's this this little um when you put this little gap in that you know you need because it's not that you really need to know what you're doing but it's more that you have to put in a minor amount of effort to get over onto the polygon network and yeah they're at number 18 so there's just shy of a $10 billion market cap on Polygon at the moment, which is gigantic. So when there is a you know a little bit of additional effort needed in getting over onto the network, you find that the people over there, you know, there's, there's plenty of, you know, just quick coins and fair launches and stuff like that to kick off on there. But there's a lot of really long term projects working on there. And those are the type of people that we're going to attract when we're on Polygon. And that doesn't mean that the people on there have you know, thousands and thousands of dollars or Matic or anything like that to throw into something. On Polygon, a lot of people go there because it has an extremely low gas price and there's a lot of really good projects on there. So we're going to be exposing ourselves to, um, what, in my opinion, one of the best marketplaces out there once we do go live on Polygon. So really looking forward to seeing how that can kind of bolster up the numbers. Uh, let's see. Next one. Uh, what kind of tea is Owen making while we wait for the AMA? What kind of tea, Owen? Uh, it's just Barry's tea, and um, pretty classic. It's um, as close as thing you could put it to would be, I guess, English breakfast tea. But it's not yeah. English breakfast tea. It's um, much, much nicer than that. Uh, if you have anywhere near you that's selling Barry's tea bags, pick that up. Never pick up Lions. They try to make one like an Irish tea as well. Awful. It's like it's like PG tips. I hate the stuff. And um, yeah, Barry's tea, highly recommended with milk and two sugars. Uh let's see. Are there any updates on the hiring front? So we are still speaking with we're still speaking with a couple of parties at the moment. It is a very deliberate process that we're going through on. I think um, you know, we've all seen both, I suppose, in every token, um, you know, projects that might hire on too quickly and stuff like that. And one thing that we learned over the last couple of weeks and months was to be a lot more deliberate in how we go forward with things. You know, we'd love to turn around today and say, yes, we have this many brilliant candidates and you know what we're, we're just hiring two of them today and that's it and then we find out you know that that's a quick recipe for stuff just blowing up in your face 
So as much as we want to have good news for everybody on that front, it is something we kind of have to keep a bit closer to our chest while we continue speaking to parties. But I can say that, you know, we have spoken with some great people and we're hoping that we will have some more news on it in the future. But we don't have anything to share right now. Is the centralized exchange still part of the plan? Yeah, so we've spoken about this um, on the last two AMAs. Uh, yes, it definitely is. I mean, getting having more ports of call for people to be able to find and trade Dojira is always a high priority for us. But as we said before, whether it be decentralized or centralized, the main thing that we would look at in it is what kind of partners can we bring on board to actually help us in building what we're trying to build. You know, it's um, like we're looking at kind of partners that we can work with right now which just isn't just you know okay you're on the exchange now get out that kind of stuff like we went forward for two cex's previously and you know we have worked with them and it's been great they certainly helped us grow and we needed to grow now we kind of look at you know what platforms actually suit us where can we kind of put that amount of funding and that amount of liquidity where we can actually see a positive benefit towards the token and not just in you know appearing on a cex and for us to need to uh, for us to need to basically do the advertisement for them or anything like that so it is definitely still part of the plan but similarly again we're being quite deliberate in who we move forward with on that and like i know we have yeah we are oh, sorry yes we did we announced the partnership that we have with munch or the collaboration that we're doing with munch and like they're looking to build a fiat on ramp as well which I mean, that's really what I look for mostly from a CEX is that, you know, getting a fiat on ramp, making it a bit easier to pick up uh, the Dojira token. As when it comes to CEXs, it can be a little bit more difficult to do more direct work as typically they would not have the amount of resources to be able to help out on specific projects in particular ways, stuff like that. And that's not saying that that's all of them, but a lot of CEXs would not have that kind of level of resources available to assist us with it. So when it comes to getting, you know, an easier way to pick up Dojira, I think the Fiat on ramp is really that that's kind of the gold standard in that kind of sense. But yeah, for the actual CEX side of it, it has to be a partner that we're going to be able to do, you know, again, have a mutual benefit from. Like if you look on Binance or KuCoin or Gate or any, any of the tier ones right now, like there's a lot of tokens on there that have a considerably lower market cap than Dojira. Like there is no magic money go up, you know, or magic price go up or whatever. Once you go live on a CEX, it's normally a pump, but it goes down just as quickly. And, you know, in developing for in developing for kind of, you know, long term success and stuff like that. Like, could you imagine if we went live with a tier one CEX back in May when we were starting to speak to them and th then the crash happened? I that money would be gone forever it's the reality and i think i saw um it might have been earlier on or is it later in the ama questions on just somebody was asking about the marketing and liquidity wallet uh, that is public so everything in there is still available to take a look over and we have bookkeeping on anything that was sent out of it so if there's any transfers in there that you need some information on then feel free to put that into any of the main channels and we'll be able to kind of follow up on that with you but we want to make sure that, you know, when it comes to that liquidity pooling, and that is community funds that we have to make sure is going to the absolute best of places, be it CEXs, DEXs, advertisements, marketing, etc. So all of this stuff, it's a lot more important to us that we make sure we're making the right decisions rather than just stating, OK, that's a CEX and they have a lot of volume. So let's just go on there because we could just wind up you know with um wash trading or with a lot of grid trading and stuff like that so yeah it's uh, i guess it's kind of a bit of a loaded answer to give to a loaded question but it is still most certainly part of the plan we do want to make it much easier to pick up those era and have you know trusted outlets that people have used in the past they can log on quickly pick it up and you know either keep it on the exchange or easily bridge it across the matic to get into staking pools etc it is all certainly still part of the plan and we would hope to have a bit more information on that stuff after our v2 goes live uh, would you describe the utility of dojira in a few words oof that's that's really putting me on the spot <laughs> no, that's why i asked yeah. it no, you know it's on yeah. there it's on there but like i was like oh it's a few words okay <laughs> Yeah, no, it's, um, I think the main issue for me with that one is I tend to maybe talk too long for questions that could be answered quite quickly. But, um, 
I guess when I talk about the actual Doji or token itself, it's having a gold standard ecosystem. And, like we're, and, and this isn't going to be a few words, I'm sorry, it's probably going to go on a little longer. But when we're building an ecosystem where we want games to be able to be their own games, be their own projects without being influenced by multiple economies that are bouncing off each other, then there needs to be something that actually ties them together. If we were to just you know, create games and Dojira just sat there, we're in a token not needed situation. Having an actual gold standard where our actual new tokens and game tokens and partner tokens can be staked out with Dojira and you can win NFTs by putting it into a staking pool lottery or you can simply buy NFTs, stuff like that. It's the incentivized gold standard token. So everything that we build moving forward will have a tie back to Dojira, be it in you know staking pools, in liquidity, or you know there might even be an in a small in-app purchases or similar to as you know Axie have shown in the past. Simply by holding a couple of tokens, we can give you access to additional services. So that's all the stuff that we look at with Dojira. That it is the utility token and it's the holding token. And when it comes down to it. We don't want to start building and designing, you know, game economies around Dojira itself just for the sole fact that, you know, if we had three games using the same token, it would be so difficult to actually manage the economy without basically making it an inflationary token, which would make it useless to hold as, you know, for as any kind of long term investment or anything like that. So. Yeah, Dojira is solving several problems at once in being something that it's a token for everybody. If you want to pick up Dojira to stake out tokens on one of our games and jump into it, then you can do that. If you just want to hold it and rely on the projects that we build or the games that we launch or the partnerships that we form to basically increase the value of that, then it's another it's another good use case to actually hold it. And then if we develop actual services and like say our Reddit tip bot and stuff like that, then we want to give it a vibrant ecosystem. We don't want to just say, you know, uh, this is the utility of Dojira. As there's so many things planned for it, I think it would really do it a disservice if we kind of tried to quickly sum it up. But I do understand what you're saying, and I think it might actually be good for us to maybe think of a way to sum it up a little bit quicker than the speech I just gave as a quick one liner to get anybody interested. But I do like the <laughs> I do like the response below, a uh, revolutionary, game changing, and unprecedented. I think it maybe gives too little information <laughs> inside of a sales pitch. But yeah, I do understand what you're saying. It can take a little bit of a while to actually outline the use cases for it when there are a lot of them, and there's interlinking between different tokens on there as well. So I will throw that over to the marketing department and Skylar, you can figure out what quick and snappy reply I give in future if that works for you. Yeah, that that's fine. I, I can I can make something. I mean, I like that the Twitter description I think is pretty pretty snappy. I like it. Let me let me read it off. I mean, maybe if if not, then it has to be something totally else. Dojira is a company focused on creating blockchain gaming experiences, gaming ecosystems, utility based NFTs. I mean, that's not really giving it the utility. Uh, you can kind of assume from there, but it's not giving you the exact detail. Yeah, I'll come up yeah, with something. Yeah, it's, it's the pitch. Like, yeah. Um, that's, yeah, and that, that was kind of the full, that, that's all of Dojira, not the Dojira token. So yeah, it's, yeah. yeah, it's strange. This never came up before. <laughs> We're going to have to do a look at it. I think you sort of nailed it on the head, though, Owen. Uh, it's definitely going to be the use case. Use case for Dojira is definitely going to be in that ecosystem um, when we implement that you know, that Dojira finance, that DeFi aspect. Um, it's going to be the main token. And then once we release the blockchain games, we're going to be able to implement a lot more use cases to come. Yeah, I think Dojira as a token is the key to all of Dojira's projects. It allows you to hold a bit of the entire ecosystem rather than, I suppose, jumping into just one particular game or one particular project that we release, stuff like that. So yeah, there's a lot in it. And certainly Skylar will work extremely hard over the next week and think up a nice snappy catchphrase. Next for us. week. <laughs> it's gonna take me that long. Yeah. No, I got you though. I'll come up with something snappy. I mean it's I, I like how you guys put it, how it's kind of like an ecosystem. It's akin to almost how Ethereum is to its own tokens. Um, not exactly, but uh kind of like how one's a parent and the other ones are just attached to it.
Yeah, and, uh, all the all the L twoers are booming lately, so maybe we have to look at those Jira chain as well. Oh, yeah, no, that was a joke before anybody yeah. gets excited or yeah. devastated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna start running our nodes from our PCs at home. <laughs> all right. Yeah, about that. Uh, let's see. Is there any plan on advertising Dojira on crypto news sites and other crypto media? Yes. And that's that's about it. I can't I can't be specific on what dates and you know where and everything, but yeah. Uh next question. How will security be handled on V2? Are my funds safe when staking or pooling? Because even big projects like <laughs> Pancake Bunny and Poly Network got exploited. Yeah, oh, there's no laughter to be had with Pancake Bunny. That really got uh, ripped that's a ripped. That's a project. I thought he was like referencing uh, a Pancake Swap or something. That's a Pancake yeah, no, so Bunny. Bunny, uh, Bunny okay. was a token. I am yeah, yeah. Wow. It, oh, take a look at the chart. It's um, so All that right. I believe it was a flash loan attack that that got hit with, and I think the the price went from something like what was it thirty dollars a token, and it just nosedived down to like ninety cent or something. It was devastating to look at. Holy it. crap! Yeah, it. yeah, that's like a cliff. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it it was an odd one to look at. I could say that much, but um, I suppose to get on with the actual question of it, then yeah. So, in the white paper, we outlined that any of the contracts that we do launch on V two will have to go through a minimum of two external audits before they actually get posted. And we're looking at good quality um, auditors actually carry those out. So yeah, uh, security is massively important. We'll also have all of the stuff up on a GitHub page if anybody wants to take a look over it themselves. And we are kind of discussing internally or briefly at least about, you know, we're going to have to have some level of bug bounty in there. I think pretty much every token now does have a bug bounty available. So it makes sense that we would have that up for offer as well, just in case anything gets under the nose of any auditors. But the auditors we are looking at, I mean, they are the industry standard. So there will be, thankfully, a level of relief that you can take in knowing that, you know, the best in the industry will be taking a look at it. And keeping bounties available obviously allows people to report anything that they do find on and be rewarded for it. So hopefully, you know, it won't come to that point where we do have to get a report in and pay out on it. But like I, like I've always said, it's much easier to pay out your pay out your pound of flesh on the day that's a, a much better solution than waking up and seeing something like a poly network exploit and just to be clear as well because there's a large misconception running around on this one the poly network exploit and poly network have nothing to do with polygon or matic they're completely separate poly network were running their own bridge and there were a lot of things that would have led to what happened over on poly network but one of the largest is that the contract was obscured nobody could actually see how it worked meaning somebody might have been able to actually look at that and see what the problem could have been or where the actual vulnerabilities were but it was it was obfuscated they never submitted the actual they never submitted the actual um contract itself for verification so stuff like that is incredibly important for me at least it's a little different if you're something proprietary in there like if we launch the game, then yeah, we might not have all of the contracts open source and available to read as we would just see, you know, our game appearing on another platform in about two days time. So when it comes to bridges, though, that's kind of a solved problem. And there was nothing that they were doing, which was kind of particularly different or innovative in how they handled their bridge. So when it comes to something that's very directly handling your crypto in that kind of manner, I mean, if you have, if you're on Ethereum and you bridge over to Polygon with a bunch of, Ether, uh, of Ethereum tokens, if somebody gets into the bridge and can take that out on the other end, you can't get that back. So it's kind of nearly a point of central failure when you're running through on that. So yeah, stuff like that, I believe, always has to have the contract available for everybody to read through. Even if you don't, you know, understand or you can't read Solidity yourself, the fact that, you know, anybody who can read it can take a look at it. And if they're like me, like I look, I actually read contracts before I jump into them. It's probably why I'm so bad or so good at ape plays and that I never jump into them because I read what I'm getting myself into. And then I just kind of back out. But um, stuff like that, I think, is really important, allowing everybody to be able to spot vulnerabilities in it and raise flags on it early. 
Now, again, to circle back to what I was saying, these will be audited by well-known auditing companies and before they go out and allow you to actually buy into the token or trade across it or interact with it in any way. And I mean, say so that's some of the issues too with tokens that, that have been releasing lately. They just kind of let it sit there for months on end and um, or they make a bridge and then they just let it sit there like it, it's the bridge is done, but nobody's audited it and they just keep it there. They just keep running it. And I mean, people can miss things and it's the job of auditors to make sure that, you know, those missed things are spotted. But a lot of people just kind of skip that step, sadly. With sending Dojira to a centralized exchange, will they accept the ETH ERC20 version and the Polygon version, or both? Likely for the beginning anyway, beyond the Ethereum version, as a lot of exchanges don't have an actual Polygon bridge set up yet, or a Polygon endpoint, which is frustrating. But um, yeah, so when getting it onto a CEX, you may need to swap it over to Ethereum to send it over onto that. now. On the bright side, I know gas fees can be horrendous at the moment, but because there won't be automatic reflections on transfers, you won't lose any of your stack while you're doing it. And of course, there will be, you know, there will be at a minimum DEXs available on the Matic side if you're looking to buy or sell additional tokens. So you won't be out of the loop or anything like that. You won't need to always come over from Ethereum, you know, get onto a farm, take it out and go back to Ethereum if you wanted to say sell any or buy more. So that will all be covered for, but I would imagine on exchanges, the centralized ones, more than likely at the start, it will be Ethereum. I can say that we will probably consider uh, the next centralized exchange that we list on to make sure that they do have a Matic, um, uh, they can transfer Matic, to oh, sorry, Adozero tokens onto the Matic network. So you hopefully will have those both those options. Yeah, certainly. And it kind of feeds back into what I was saying on you know, finding the right partners to work with on CEXs, that Dojira will primarily be a Polygon token. If you have it on Ethereum, the reality is your use cases will likely come down to snapshot voting, which is not really, you know, with the token directly. And it'll also just be holding it. So our use cases are happening on Polygon. So we would be pretty open to speaking with any CEXs who would see the importance of us being able to allow people to on and off ramp directly to Polygon without having to get them to go through a bridge and pick up Ethereum to pay for any gas fees that, that entails, etc. Question, anything you want to see from the community? Uh, well, I mean, honestly, if like more, more activity for sure, but then that's also extremely difficult because if you look at almost any tokens community or, I mean, any community in general, you're going to have about a 70-30 mix of lurkers so to speak and people that are actually active or semi-active you're going to have the ones that and that's probably like 10 percent or something that are on there almost every single day and then you're going to have um probably like the the 10 or 20 percent of of the people that are active coming in every once in a while and then the rest that are lurkers are never going to say a word or they're going to uh just kind of like maybe pop in once in a while and talk. I, I would say there's probably over the course of like a month, uh, maybe like 500, 400, maybe lower people that like different people that are talking and we have about 3,500 or 3,600 holders. That's a very small percentage. Um, so, you know, encouraging others to become active. Of course, you know, we're trying to do our part by like those little, you know, mini games that you see in the Telegram. 3,500 3, holders, and there's about 20 people playing it for free Dojira. And it's like, that's free. Like, uh, that's like a, what was it? It was a thousand, and it was at like 10 cents or something. That's like a hundred bucks just for playing a little karate game or whatever, and for maybe an hour. And it's like I would I would do that. What? It's a hundred bucks for an hour. Okay, and just encouraging your fellow community members to become a little bit more active. And of course, we'll do our part to, you know, incentivize that as well. Here's some Dojira. Here's some Matthew SDC, etc. From you know, for example, the Rocket League game and the the CS:GO game. Um, we get more active community members. They'll be able to get more active on the posts that we bring up to do those community marketing events, like uh, you know 
Twitter Thursdays, Reddit Fridays, etc., YouTube Wednesdays, and they can go out and comment. And the more people that are there, the more eyes on, the more chance that somebody will see the comment that says Dojira, the more of a chance someone's going to look it up. Uh, list goes on as well, just talking to people and other telegrams, the more active members there are. Granted, even the, the quote-unquote people that are just lurking are also going in other telegrams. I, I get uh, messages from people who are like, oh yeah, this person told me about you guys. I'm like, I've no idea who that is. Um, so really just going out there and, and talking to people, letting them know. Yeah, absolutely. And another part of that as well is that I've noticed like on Twitter, like a lot of you will be following me, but you're not actually following each other. You're all a great way to amplify your own messages when you're speaking to somebody and you know you're able to like each other's comments, you're able to retweet things on each other. Like the community rallying around themselves when it comes to community level marketing is brilliant. So it's great that, you know, when I post up something and, you know, we amplify it out and get the message actually out there. But you're all, I mean, there's, there's a lot of people out there that are fantastically charismatic and how to carry forward the actual, you know, the plans that are behind Dojira and getting people to look at the white paper and, you know, treating it as the project it is and getting excited. But you're all able to amplify each other on that one. So do work together as much as you can on it. It's, um, like we have a brilliant community for getting this stuff up and running. We just need to make sure that we have a big community for being able to amplify the message and basically start that traction of critical mass whenever we do have a big community incentive running out or anything like that. And when you see stuff like the CSGO competition, the Rocket League competition, stuff like that, like spread that word anywhere you can. I mean, the prizes for that, if translated back into the USDC or UST, uh, USDT value, are extremely high. Like there's a uh, like small competitions would often run at weekends that might have like you know a fifty dollar or one hundred dollar prize pool, and you see them getting streamed by you know streamers that have one or two hundred people watching. I mean that is a brilliant way to be able to kind of you know slice into a market that we're already aiming towards. We're building gaming experiences, and in particular, we're looking at gamers who like play to earn experiences. And let's be, you know, blunt on it. Streaming is one of the oldest play to earn um, industries in the world, if not the oldest. So, uh, well, no, I suppose there was the old uh, Nintendo Power competitions, but I think nowadays it's the most modern and recognizable play to earn um, career that you can have is you've got the streamers. And now and that's not to say that they're only playing. Obviously, you're a streamer. A lot of that comes with being an entertainer as well. But the prize pools we're putting forward for these are large and that is something that we do need to get the word out on a lot more so when you look at you know fan groups or subreddits or forums anything like that that are dedicated to the actual game that we're playing or even just esports in general or streamer competitions etc i get the word out on there and again amplify each other if a couple of people jump in on it at the same time and are able to draw a bit of attention to it and obviously don't do that in any spammy way because you'll just make yourselves and Dojira unwelcome. But if you're able to, in a respectful way, in a friendly way, just draw attention to the competition that's going on and, you know, be a natural part of conversation rather than jumping in with an advertisement interface, like that is the type of stuff that will just move mountains. So that's definitely the type of stuff I'd love to see more of. Yeah, exactly. And and being knowledgeable with the white paper, at least kind of like what we're about to expand on any of their questions or at least refer them to us uh which auditors will be used for the v2 token oh, yeah so there's paladin certic which dan listed so those are two pretty well-known names now certic i think are probably the gold standard on us at this stage so uh, we can't give any promises on which exact ones we'll be going with i mean outside of paladin and certic you know there's obelisk who are fantastic as well there's a lot of really good names out there right now and we will be gravitating towards ones who are known for having a good track record of success across multiple different contracts a large library of contracts behind them which have stood the test of time next question how do you measure the effectiveness effectiveness of marketing campaigns for example do you track data of amount of holders telegram members price etc which can be possibly related to the marketing done yes and it's sadly primarily the the price um if we tracked it in the amount of telegram members and twitter uh, followers etc and just overall people that have eyes on the project it'd be kind of skewed because again those ask me anything that we had there was a bunch of bots that were told by the ask me anything community to 
in order to win this, you have to join their Telegram. You have to follow their Twitter, etc. And it's like we that pretty much bogged down a lot of people. And we have about 10,000 Telegram members, whereas we have 3,500 holders or 3,600 holders. So it's mainly about mainly about price points. Um, one marketing tactic that is absolutely it's the most effective in my opinion is community marketing you see if you look at the graph you see like a price rise from about the i don't remember off the top of my head about an eight cent or nine cent price point to about uh, touching 21 cents or touching around the 20 cent mark that was from i believe it was from the the doge post or maybe that was from that was the 71 cent uh all-time high but we pretty much have these these ideas to reach out to other communities in a way that's not exactly like, you know, super intrusive. It's just kind of, you know, comparing our community with theirs and just kind of like, hey, you know, we're we're similar in a way and um informing them about Dojira and doing a lot of talking to them either via Reddit or Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, etc. We did a lot of pushes during that time that again it was just people talking to other people and commenting, etc. And then they're just like, okay, you know, I'm actually interested rather than just a random ad that you get desensitized <laughs> to all the advertisements and everything. And then you're just like, oh yeah, that's just another ad, whatever, and then you pass it by, right? Um, a lot of it's community marketing. Granted we did get an influx of people with one of the um, crypto articles that went up for, on AMB Crypto. There was specifically people that came in that said, I'm from this. I saw this. Like, what's this all about? Uh, and so there will be people that are actually reading those. That That's where they get their news from. And they come out, check the community out, and possibly buy the token. And we are, of course, like Dan said, looking at those avenues and, you know, paid that marketing, um, that firm. And so that in combination with community work, marketing is just like that's what we want to go down and again the ask me anything is kind of like the in between of that because we like the 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 team we're going out there and we're talking to them and everything and and so like just all of those is is how we do effective marketing uh so increasing the amount of uh, active users is definitely a key to success here when it comes to marketing campaigns yeah certainly and I guess on my end, like as Skylar was saying, you know, we had that article that went up and we had people come in directly asking about token. Like it's a big difference between quality and quantity and stuff like that. Like we had a massive quantity come in when, you know, we had Twitter pages that were saying, yeah, you have to join this Telegram channel and send a screenshot of it. And all it essentially does is flood out our Telegram. That's the type of stuff we do not want to see any more of. And I know that a lot of, you know, those kind of things were put forward in you know best fate but the reality is that it's just a pumped number which you know means nothing so for me a lot of it comes down to looking at you know the amount of holders is actually a pretty good one but i look at more so the day on day holder growth that we get across that like i think the day of the amb crypto um article went out we did see something like a one percent increase but on top of that as well and this is not what other people like to hear but it's one way that i look at the health of any token when you start seeing top wallets uh, slowly start you know cutting off small shades stuff like that uh, distribution amongst other users is that every token needs to eventually come down to a point where it's it's just far less i suppose packed with you know just top holders and stuff like that I mean, if you look at any early token or new token you normally have a bunch of you know five and ten percent holders up at the top of it and that's what always signals to me that something is in very early days now we used to have a lot of that we only have a few you know kind of heavy wallets left at the moment which you know i absolutely love seeing that the more that we see distribution up at the top level of tokens it shows me that you know we're maturing as a token that we're getting a more sustainable ecosystem and it's just overall much better for it when i suppose the balance of power in any token is evenly spread among all the holders. So I know people don't like it when they think about, you know, a high up wallet selling off tokens. It's always, you know, not a thing that would worry me in the sense that most people would do it in the sense that they want to keep value in the amount of tokens that they're keeping. So they would exist smartly. It's very different when you see, you know, a, a massive sell off of tokens. I understand that entirely. Nobody likes seeing that kind of stuff. But on the overall, when you see the top wallets kind of slowly starting to trickle down a percentage owned and you see, you know, the day on day holders going up, 
that to me is the perfect recipe for any token. I saw this one token today. It dropped down uh, quite a bit. Like it was, like it was a, it was a cliff, and it was just because the top five holders had like something like forty percent of the supply, and one guy had like eleven percent of it. And it was a person. It wasn't part of the dev team or anything. And then two others following him had like eight percent each. It was insane. Um, yeah. And they just they just yeah. did a total dump, like not skimming off the top at all, just everything all at once. And it was it was a horrible graph, um, a horrible horrible chart. Uh, and keep keep in mind to anybody new listening that that twelve percent wallet is not in anyone's control. It's it's within the team's control. It's pretty much out of circulation. Um, just yeah, if you are looking um, at those holders. Yeah, that's uh, if you have a look through the actual white paper, and um, that's what it will be used to start populating our staking pool. So you will be able to earn your own cut of those tokens, and that will be dripped into the supply slowly. It won't be something that we'll be inflating the supply with over the course of, you know, a week or anything like that. This is a long term holder reward from it. And it's to um, the white paper has a lot in there showing that how we're going to be taking Dojira back into circulation for staking and stuff like that. So we're not going to be doing any inflation outside of the originally intended supply amount, uh, save for the ratio scaling. But that's not inflation. And that's just rescaling the actual number of tokens in it where everybody's getting their proportional amount back. So it's not going to be an inflationary token. There's going to be a set supply, which will just go kind of basically we want to keep a circular uh, movement on it. We want people to be able to continue staking in Dojira pools and get Dojira without us having to mint any additional Dojira. So everything that we're building basically looks at, you know, a service or utility. It aims towards getting some Dojira back into the actual staking pool for people who just want to lock up and leave that vest. How can we get more involved with the community marketing? Uh, help get others involved as well. So, of course, you know, if you are doing your, your part and doing the uh, like making comments and posts and kind of getting the word out there and letting people know about Dojira, the other half is, you know, trying to get other people to uh, to kind of get the word out as well. So, for example, let's say that you have a lot of connections and you know this person is, you know, within a certain community, talk to them, see if maybe you can talk to other people about Dojira or, you know, within the own community of Dojira, get other people to, again, become more active. Uh, let's see the next question when when dojira based game this year can we have a dojira beat em up we'll um so we'll have more info on the actual games we'll be bringing out in the near future right now on a development side we're more focused on getting the polygon platform up and running so more info coming soon though uh if i buy dojira on hotbit will i still get the benefits of holding it you uh, will no. you you will not get the reflections that are coming back. You would have to transfer to a MetaMask wallet or just buy on Uniswap, and then immediately once it's transferred to that uh, MetaMask wallet or Trust wallet, you'd be able to get reflections from Dojira. Yeah, but um, similarly on that one, I mean, we are going to be looking at doing the V2 token switchover in the very near future. So you'd only be getting reflections for a short amount of time, maybe not long enough to actually make up for the reflectionary costs of transferring out of an exchange. Um, additionally, on top of that one as well, uh, if you're on Hotbit or Whitebit, you will get automatically moved on to the V2 token as well. So that may be a little simpler as well, that you won't have to pay to bridge across. Oh, sorry, no, I mean, it may be on Ethereum, but you wouldn't have the hassle of, say, you know, looking into your MetaMask and getting that new token added or anything like that. So if you want that quick switch over, you can just stay on Hotbit or Whitebit. I think we've covered just about everything on there. I guess, yeah, on the outro side of it, uh, there's a lot happening at the moment. And I appreciate that we would love to give a lot more information on where we are exactly with the switch over on the token with it. But we don't want to prematurely give any information on that, which, you know, may be overridden by the sense of we get an audit report back that says something has to be fixed up here, stuff like that. We are hoping we'll be able to start giving out the tentative timeframes of when the switch over will be happening. Um, likely, likely before the next, uh, likely before the next AMA, I would say over the next week, we'll be able to get a tentative date out for when it'll at least be going into audit. So yeah, a lot happening in the very near future. Um, as usual, there's nothing that you need to do on your side to make sure that you get those V2 tokens. Snapshot will be taken, and you will all be airdropped to the tokens. So 
don't have any fears about needing to send them to a different wallet. If anybody does tell you to send them to a different wallet, they are scamming you. So please block report and let us know about them. And yeah, that is that is the most of it for this time. Yeah, we're going to have a lot more news in the near future, though. Like, I think we're really ramping up on the development side of it now, especially with having, you know, more full time resources in myself jumping onto it and being able to work kind of directly with Skylar and Dan a lot more on their time frames too. So yeah, a lot to look forward to guys. Yep. Yeah, thanks a million all. Thanks guys. Bye. Speak soon.